Okay, this is part two of 2.1. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue our discussion about sets. We have another type of set called the empty set. So I'm looking here at this definition at the top, the empty set, also known as the null set. So in college, usually they like to use this word, null set. Okay, And this is the set with no elements, which sounds a little weird, but it does happen. Okay, A good example is, of this is the set of natural numbers that are negative. Remember that the natural numbers, remember denoted by n, starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, and it just goes on forever. But notice that it has no negative numbers. So since it has no negative numbers, that means that this example, okay, this example right here, the answer would be the empty set. Now, what does the empty set look like? So it looks kind of like this. It's kind of like a zero, and it has like a little line going through it. Similar to, um, to what we use in trigonometry, theta, but it's not theta, okay? Theta is a little bit different. This this is a more of a circular, oh, if that makes any sense. You, you can see it in your book. Um, It's on page, I believe it's 54. Yeah, it's on page 54 if you want to take a look at a better drawing of that. But this is this represents the empty set. Okay. And it will happen on, on occasion. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to another method. So far we have talked about using the roster method, which is the two curly braces, and then we list all the elements. Okay. But now we're gonna look at something that's a little bit more defined. And you might have seen this before in your Algebra 2 classes, maybe Algebra 1. It's called Set Builder Notation, OK? So Set Builder Notation is another method of repre uh, to represent set, representing sets, OK? It's useful for infinite sets because we can't, if you have a set that's infinite, you really can't list all the elements because it goes on forever. So here's what it looks like. We start with the curly braces. So they still both have their curly braces. Okay, that doesn't change. Then we have to define what we're talking about. So in this one, in this particular example, we are talking about x. So I went ahead and put the set of all elements of x. That's what this x represents. If I wanted to use y, it would just be a y instead. Okay, such that. So such that is represented by these two dots right here, okay? We can also use a straight line for such that. So just, just kind of keep that in mind as well because the, the book does like to kind of go back and forth with this, okay? Then you have to define where these x's are located. So if these numbers are part of the natural numbers, then this would be an n, okay? But as it so happens, the example that we gave is part of the real numbers. So we say that x is an element of the real numbers. And that's that's this right here. x is an element of the real numbers. And x is greater than 3. So a visual of what this might look like, just so you know what we're talking about. Let's say we had a number line. okay, And we have that 3 here. It's an open circle. Hopefully you remember that. And it's greater than 3. So it would be everything going to the right. So if I were to represent this right here as a set, OK, I would use this notation right here. I would use all this to represent that. I would say x such that x is an element of the real numbers because it includes all the real numbers. And x is bigger than 3, greater than 3, OK? So we're going to go ahead and do some examples of this just to practice using set builder notation. It says, for the first example, use set builder notation to write the following sets. So the set of integers less than 8. So we're going to start with our curly braces. OK, so that's going to be those little curly braces. Might have to erase this if it's too long. OK, and we're talking about the integers. We're going to go ahead and stick with x just because I think it's more comfortable. So we're going to say x such that, remember those two little dots, or the line, you can put a line instead if you want, such that, since it's telling us that it has to be part of the integers, okay, we're going to say that x is an element of 
the integers. Remember, integers is represented by the i, okay? So x is an element of the integers, and here it says x is less than 8. So let's go ahead and put that. So x, let's see what color did I use for the condition? Uh, purple, okay. So x is less than 8. So this right here, this less than 8, this would be your criteria. Okay, and I, I don't think I mentioned that right now, but the last part is going to be whatever the condition that they give you is. Okay, but yeah, that's it. This is your answer for this one. Let's try another one. So letter B says the set of natural numbers greater than a thousand. So again, we're going to start with our little curly braces. Okay. And we're going to stick with x because, like I said, that's familiar. So x such that, okay, x is an element of, let's see, what are they talking about? The natural numbers. They want it to be the natural numbers this time. So is an element of the natural numbers. You want to be a little more fancy. You can put that extra line there. Okay, it just looks a little more mathematical. Um, and greater than a thousand. So X has to be greater than 1000. And again, this would be our answer for this one. Okay, last one. Well, for this, this example, the set of real numbers between three and 10. So I wanted to do one with the between just so you don't freak out if that happens, okay? So again, we're gonna start with our curly braces and we're gonna start with X. So X such that, okay? X is an element of, in this case, they want it to be the real numbers. So X is an element of the real numbers. Remember there's that extra line for fanciness. And between three and 10. So when you have a between, you have to use the notation where X is between those. So X is between three and 10. So that means that X is greater than three and it's less than 10. Okay, not equal to it. If it had said, and equal or and inclusive, then we would put the lines. Okay, but it doesn't, so we're not going to do that. Okay, that's it for this one. So not too bad. Okay, let's move on. I think we're almost done. Uh, let me see. Uh, we're, we're almost done. We're, it won't take too long. Next definition has to do with something called cardinality. So cardinality of a set, which is this right here, is the number of elements in a set. So pretty much whatever you put into that list, just count them. That's, that's going to be your cardinal number for anything that is finite. So by finite, I mean that you can count it and it'll come as a whole number. Um, the ones we did before, like some of these, let's say, for instance, um, B and C, those would not be finite because there's infinite numbers that fall into that space, okay? So let's just go ahead and go right into it. Uh, we do know, uh, go ahead and take note here, that cardinality of a number, okay, is denoted by this right here, where A is the set. So depending what your set is, so these three are the sets here, it would be N of parentheses that, okay? Let's go ahead and just start right with an example. Letter A says, find the cardinality of each set for letter A, we have set C, so right away I'm going to go ahead and put cardinality of C, okay, equals, and we just have to count, so one, two, three, four, five. So the cardinality of the first one is five. Make sure that when you do these, you do not just put the five. We are doing, a, we do have to be very specific with our notation. So make sure that you do do that n parentheses c equals 5. Okay. Looking at the next one. So we're going to have n parentheses of e because now we want the cardinality of the set e. And we have a 0. 
be careful here because I know it's the number zero, but it still counts as one element. So the answer to this one is one. Be careful with zero, okay? Zero is still a counting number. It's part of the whole, the whole numbers is part of the integers, is part of the reals and so forth, okay? Now take a moment, I, I want you to maybe pause or just, you know, try to get the answer before me. I'll give you a few seconds. Letter C is gonna be set B, so N parentheses, B, okay, the cardinal number of B. And what do you think the answer is going to be this? So take a few seconds and see if you can figure it out before me. Okay, so first of all, there's no curly braces, okay? And the reason there's no curly braces is because this is that null set we talked about earlier. So there is, it's empty. This is the empty set which means that there is no elements inside it because by definition, if we go back up here to our definition, okay, the empty set or null set is the set with no elements. Therefore, there are zero elements in this example. Kind of interesting, okay? And last but not least, okay, we just have a couple of definitions that we need to go make sure we understand. Definition, the first one. Set A is equal to set B. So A equals B. If and only if A and B have exactly the same elements. So for example, okay, let's say A is equal to A, B, C. And B is equal to B, C, A. Are these equal? Is A equal to B? Okay. Well, all we have to do is look at the elements and see if they're the same. So this has an A, this has an A. This has a B, this has a B, this has a C, and this has a C. So A is equal to B. Yes. This is the definition of an equal set, okay? The elements, the order doesn't matter as long as they are the same in both sets, they are equal to each other. Whereas definition two, okay, is talking about equivalency. So in this one, it says set A is equivalent to set B, and that's noted with this little, this little symbol here, okay? If and only if A and B have the same number of elements. So now we are talking about cardinality. Okay. Remember that cardinality is the number of elements in a set. Okay. So that means all we have to do is count them. So for example, Let's let A equal to, I don't know, one, two, three. I'm gonna make it real simple. And let B equal to two, three, four, five, okay? And then we ask, is A equivalent? Remember this little symbol means equivalent to B. So we have to look at the cardinality. So the cardinality of A, because remember that's represents cardinality, is one, two, three. So it's three elements. Whereas the cardinality of B is four. So therefore, A is not equivalent to B. Okay. Now, can a set be both equivalent and equal? Interesting to think about. Well, what do you think? If it's equal, it has the same number, it has the same exact elements. So therefore, it should have the same cardinality, correct? Think about that. I think that's it for this video, guys. This again, this is part two of your 2.1. So make sure that you do take notes for both of them and put them on the same uh, page of notes.